Thank you so much for being uh, here with me today. Uh, but first, I wanted to ask you if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my name is Carol. I live in, in Northern Ireland with my family. Um, I have uh, my two children and my very ginger cat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> Um, how did you get into writing? Have you always been a writer? Yes, I think so. Um, always from, from when I was little, I think it's probably a bit of a cliche, but ever since I was little, it was always writing something, whether it was poems or stories, entering competitions, um, in primary school. Um, yeah, it's always been there. Oh, that's good. Um, well, what is your writing process like now, as opposed to then? Um, I don't have very much time. <laughs> my time, my time is definitely more uh, not mine. Um, so I try and squeeze it in where I can um, during the day when the kids are at school, or you know, if I'm not running about and doing whatever. Um, I really have to be strict with myself at times because I'm a bit of a dreamer. So it would, you know, time would just disappear. Right. Do you yeah. plot a lot of your stories or do you kind of like about 50, 50, I would say, um, I try to, I mean, I, I do write it down, but it, uh, tends to, to wander. <laughs> right. It just goes wherever. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, who would you say are some of, uh, your biggest writer inspirations growing up? Ooh, um, I would say I absolutely love Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Love it. Yes. Um, I, th I think it's just fantastic. Um, a lot of, uh, I mean, Stephen King, all the, all the usual sort of Dean Koontz. I, I remember reading him probably right. when I shouldn't have been. Um, <laughs> uh, 11 or 12 and the librarian looking at me quite funny. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it was it was the 90s, early 90s. Nobody really passed much remarks. Right. Um, I remember reading a lot of Lewis Carroll when I was very young. Um Phantasmagoria, um, the long poem, which is all about a ghost. Um, yeah, it's really quite a mix. Uh, I love poetry as well. Um, so Yeats, lots of things about fairies, uh, local ghost stories I grew up with as well. There's a lot of those, a lot of fairy stories. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of big variety, but I love that. Um, so your story with um, Raventel is called The Hollowed Earth. Can you tell yeah. me about it? Well, um, it's a YA dark fantasy, and it deals with about a, a boy called Luke Ferona, who just has turned 17. It's set in the near future um, in a somewhat dystopian atmosphere uh, the world has basically fallen apart there's been a huge sort of world war catastrophe um, things really aren't good he suffers a lot with his mental health not surprised really given the circumstances um, but he feels incredibly different he looks different he has pink eyes for a start um, very pale skin doesn't fit in doesn't feels like he just doesn't belong and does suffer as a result of it. Um, there is a virus that's going around um, called the Moore's virus. And I think everything just adds to his sense of otherness. So people tend to stay away from him. He starts suffering from quite bad. The book begins with, with a, an incident where he almost dies and um, then sort of becomes like fevered dreams and he has all these strange dreams which really do lead him down a very strange place mm -hmm. I love that it, I mean it sounds incredible um 
I was wondering, because your story features so many different creatures, paranormal, you got like dragons, fairies, angels, demons, like yeah. everything. Uh, what is, what, I will, like, what are your favorite paranormal creatures? You have so many, but what are some of your favorites? Ooh, I love dragons. I do like dragons. Um, I have to, yeah. Um, I, when I was little, I was completely obsessed with uh, the Pegasus. Oh, okay. Always wanted a flying horse. <laughs> Yeah, I was totally obsessed. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I like everything pretty much. It is all very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, what do you hope readers who read your book kind of take away from it? Um, that they enjoy the story. Um, that they they want to stick with it because it will. It is one of four. Mm-hmm. Um and that they they feel empathy with Luke um, as frustrating as he can be at times I think for people reading his personality um, that they really do enjoy it that it scares them a lot too because they want that a <laughs> um, little bit of trauma is not too bad um, yeah really that they enjoy it I love that um what are you currently working on I know you said you it's a book of four but is there anything else as well well at the minute I've just got edits back for a short story um for a collection with Raven Teal um again a lot of my work would center around Northern Ireland because it's what I know it's it's where I live um Mm. and again that short story is based around a local lock here um so that's quite different <laughs> um yeah so the the other thing that I had started to work on was uh it was a story an idea that I had got um that uh, the idea is that horror movies are made in to to warn people about evil and you know the devil and and everything and I had an idea that perhaps perhaps it wasn't perhaps it was the other side that was causing all the all the upset um and and making the demons out to be something that they actually weren't that's (laughs) I like that that's cool I really like that you just start writing that right now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so another question I wanted to ask you is that um, what would be a dream project for you to write that you haven't yet written yet or that you're maybe you don't see yourself anytime soon writing it, but someday down the line you would love to attempt to write? Um, I have quite a long list of things that I would like to write. And I'm trying to work my way through them. Um, <laughs> one of them is a story based around the the Irish famine, um, and it, it's more of a traditional ghost story. Um, I have plotted quite a bit for it, but I've actually not had the time to sit down and write it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so more of a proper haunted house. Nice. I love those kinds of stories. Those are the best. <laughs> um, so if you were given the opportunity to go anywhere in the world to write for months at a time on a project, where would you go and why? I know a lot of the stuff you write is where you live, of course, but if you could go anywhere, where would you go? Where would I go? Do you know, I actually think I would quite like to go to the likes of the Arctic Circle, um, where it's dark and quiet and everyone would leave me alone (laughs) (laughs) need a focus (laughs) yeah Yeah, but I just think there's something really eerie and you know about the the way that it's just dark at times all the time um yeah I would quite like to do that that. that's a great answer um (laughs) one of the last questions that I have for you is um what is some advice that you would give to aspiring writers uh, I suppose the only advice I could really give is just write just write just do it um 
it doesn't matter if you think it's bad. It doesn't matter if, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Just write. And eventually it will fall into place. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Be patient. Um, yeah, that's about, that's the best advice that I could give. <laughs> it's really good advice. <laughs> Just got to do it. <laughs> Just do well, it. Yeah. Oh, well, we went through the questions really, really fast, but uh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. But before you go, um, do you have um, any social media where readers can find you? Yeah, I'm on on Twitter for as long as that ship is sailing. Um, (laughs) Don't know what's happening there. I know. Um, (laughs) I'm on Facebook as well. um, And my website should be up and running quite soon. It is www.thespiritscape.com. Okay, perfect. So that should be should be awesome. nearly ready to go. <laughs> awesome. I'll probably email you and ask you for the the link so we could put it in the yeah. YouTube description. Sure, well. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I loved hearing about your story and about your writing and everything. So thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Carol. I hope you have a good rest of your day. You too. It's in bedtime here, but uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> keeping you awake. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It's just it's so bizarre that you know the eight hour difference. You sort of forget oh, that know. people have like different things going on. Oh, <laughs> well, I hope you have a good one. No bother at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>